It's been a while. Things have changed. I started hearing whispers about Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. We have to prepare for the worst. The Jedi fell a long time ago. There aren't many left. Perhaps it is time to begin again. Ahsoka, original series streaming August 23rd. Welcome back, everyone. It's Charlie. They released a brand new Ahsoka trailer to announce the release date with some new footage, so we'll break it all down. If you're brand new to the channel, I will be doing videos for all the episodes, just like the Mandalorian series. It's a spinoff of the Mandalorian, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. This part of the timeline is what we call the Mandoverse. Basically, there are a couple spinoffs that are happening, like the Skeleton Crew series is another Mandoverse spinoff, but I don't think that we'll see that till like early next year. Originally, it was going to come this year, but they've kind of delayed everything just a little bit. There'll be eight episodes of Ahsoka. Dave Filoni confirmed that they're basically picking up where things left off at the end of Star Wars Rebels, and we'll probably see some of those Star Wars Rebels ending scenes in live action. Like some of these scenes replay what we saw at the very end of Rebels with the big time jump. But he said it'll basically start with Ahsoka, Sabine Wren, and Hera wandering through the galaxy, and Ahsoka still being kind of a loner and outsider, even amongst the New Republic as it's risen. Even though she was a huge part in helping the Rebellion form and overthrow the Empire during the events of the original trilogy, that's mostly because she stayed wary of any organization, whether they say that they're good or bad, Empire, New Republic, anybody that wields a lot of power. They kind of got into that during The Mandalorian Season 3, where they wanted to make the New Republic seem like it gotten kind of shady too, like they were being just as bad as the Empire in some ways. Part of the reason for that is laying the track work to show you how someone like Thrawn can come in and almost overthrow the New Republic, because it still existed by the time of the sequel trilogy, much, much later in the timeline. So we know at some point they will survive Grand Admiral Thrawn. If you haven't read the original Thrawn trilogy, I would definitely recommend doing that, even though they're not doing that exact story. It's loosely based on that, like the Thrawn movie that they announced will be loosely based on Heir to the Empire, then Dark Force Rising, then The Last Command, basically. My early theory right now is that that new Thrawn movie will be like their new main movie and that will turn into a trilogy and it will loosely follow the events of the original Thrawn trilogy with all the Mandalorian and spin-off series filling the gaps in between those movies. One of the terms we use is, you know, the war between the New Republic and uh, the Remnant Empire. So we're going to see, you know, you need a conflict. And I'm uh, you know, just kind of looking at a lot of the things that were written over the years in various expanded universe projects, trying not just to look at what John and I did, but we're looking at what was done kind of historically in the time period as a guide, I think, for... You know, generations of Star Wars fans <laughs> before the era of, uh, you know, episode 7, 8, 9, that was what, what we saw as oh, the post turn of the Jedi era when you're talking yeah, about uh, story and characters in the expanded universe. So there's a, a treasure of things to to uh, draw from, not just within our own series, but uh, in the in the bigger galaxy. They do have the other movies that they announced in different parts of the timeline, like the Dawn of the Jedi movie, the very beginning of what eventually became the Jedi Order. Then the new movie that's meant to be a sequel to the sequel trilogy, like it's 15 years after The Rise of Skywalker. But I think those two movies will wind up being a little bit later. I guarantee you we probably will not hear a whole lot about those new movies for a little while. Like they'll be mostly focused on what's happening with Ahsoka and this part of the timeline with the Disney Plus series. But because the Mandalorian series is getting up there in seasons, that will continue for a little while longer, but eventually the Ahsoka series will become like the main new series. All the actors were talking about how they basically plan on doing multiple seasons of Ahsoka. We've gotten some cameos with Ahsoka in previous seasons of The Mandalorian. We've gotten some teasers for what life has been like for Ahsoka these last couple of years since Return of the Jedi. But during her series, we'll see what life is really like for her day to day, living the life of someone who follows her own path through the Force, which Grogu has kind of started to do now, but he's a little child, basically. She's been doing this for a long time now, following this path through the Force. Even though they use the title Jedi during the trailers, she is not a Jedi. Like, she doesn't call herself a Jedi anymore. They even said that in previous series. Anakin Skywalker was weak. I destroyed him. Then I will avenge his death. Revenge is not the Jedi way. I am no Jedi. 
Part of the reason why I think they use the Jedi term in the trailers is just for casual fans that aren't familiar with the Clone Wars or Star Wars Rebels. Dave Filoni did say that that was a challenge because there's a large portion of the fan base that never watched the animated series and only watched the live action stuff. So they kind of had to do a speed run reintroduction to her character like this is who Ahsoka is. This is how she fits into the timeline. This is how she's connected to the other main characters people view as main characters like Anakin Skywalker, Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker, Obi-Wan Kenobi, everybody else. But the other interesting thing is that Dave Filoni said that she's meant to be a bridge between what came before, like the old ways of the Jedi, like the old ways of the Force users, and the potential new ways that we might see develop in the future, which I think gets into the idea of what Grogu will eventually become. Like, he left the Jedi Order, he left Luke Skywalker, so he's following his own path. What is he going to become someday? This also gets into what's happening with the antagonists during the series. I wouldn't call them villains, but they are kind of like the other side of this equation with Grand Admiral Thrawn. Balin Skull, played by Ray Stevenson, may he rest in peace. He passed away since I post my last trailer video. So it is really sad. It was really sudden. They haven't really announced what happened. They confirmed my earlier theory that he was a former Jedi that survived Order 66 and has been living as a mercenary ever since the events of Revenge of the Sith. Dave Filoni also confirmed what's going on with the orange lightsabers. He said that they're specifically not meant to be red. Like, they're not meant to be pure. He says they're meant to be something else. And it's meant to sort of play into the idea that Ahsoka is also not a Jedi technically either. Like, she's a former Jedi who's still a Force user following her own path through the Force in Balin Skull, this other antagonistic character who's kind of like a dark Jedi. That's about as close as you could call it, a dark Jedi, but not a Sith following his own path, but he just bent a little bit darker than, say, someone like Ahsoka or another gray Jedi or someone like that would be. The Bendu would be another good example of that, somebody who practices both dark side and light side. They also explain what's happening with Sabine Wren and Hera when things pick up. So the actress who plays Sabine, Natasha Lou Bordizzo, said that the only mission she has in the series is to find Ezra Bridger. Like, that's her main reason for going with Ahsoka when she shows up on Lothal. Like, look, things have changed. We have a big mission. You need to come. But Hera and Ahsoka are both concerned mostly with this threat that's coming to the galaxy, which is Grand Admiral Thrawn. They got a teaser for that at the end of The Mandalorian Season 3 with the Shadow Council. They also want to find Ezra Bridger as well because he was lost at the end of Star Wars Rebels with Thrawn. But now that Thrawn's back, that means that Ezra is probably back too. But for those two, Ezra is more like a side quest, whereas it's like the main quest for Sabine Wren. During the trailer, there's a nice new scene of Sabine using Ezra's lightsaber fighting Shin Hati, this other dark Jedi who's the apprentice of Balin Skull. It looks like the fight scene is still happening on Lothal before they leave. The reason why she has Ezra's lightsaber is because when they went to fight Grand Admiral Thrawn in the Star Wars Rebels finale, he left it with Chopper before they were taken by the Space Wheels, the Purgles, which we saw in The Mandalorian, another big teaser for them coming back. And it looks like Chopper has stayed with her all these years after that. One of the last things that Ezra talked to her about was protecting Lothal. So she's tried to take that mission, like she stayed on Lothal and tried to keep the peace. There are a couple other brand new scenes of Ahsoka running away from that same Jedi Temple ruins in the previous trailers as it collapses or it blows up. It looks like she has some kind of fight or something happens when she's inside there. There's another totally different scene of her wasting one of Thrawn's HK droids as she prepares to fight that Sith Inquisitor, which is from those previous scenes of their fight, just like a longer version of that fight. Then they have the same scene of the Jedi droid played by David Tennant from The Clone Wars. It's meant to be the exact same character like David Tennant came back to do the character again. He was the Jedi professor droid on the ship that went to Ilum as part of the gathering process. It was a big ceremony that the Jedi had over many thousands of years to craft their lightsabers. There's another scene of him here on what seems like Ahsoka's ship. So it seems like the Jedi droid has stayed with Ahsoka, but that's not totally clear. They also released a couple other previews of brand new scenes. This one isn't clear where it's happening. This could be where they're meeting with the New Republic talking about the threat of Grand Admiral Thrawn because it looks like it's happening in a fairly official setting. This scene is actually taken directly from the end of Rebels, like it's one of those live-action versions of the Star Wars Rebels ending, with her coming to get Sabine and them standing in front of that same mural. They also remind you she's got her Mandalorian armor there from the Star Wars Rebels series. It was weird that she did not show up during the Mandalorian Season 3 finale. There were rumors about that happening, but even Tamura Morrison said that Boba Fett was supposed to have a cameo at the end of The Mandalorian Season 3, and it sounds like based on what the other Mandalorian actors said, they wound up cutting a lot of stuff just for budgetary reasons too. 
Then they have another new scene of that Sith Inquisitor in the armor on the same planet where you see Ahsoka talking about Grand Admiral Thrawn returning and being the heir to the Empire, like named after the book. Who is the Sith Inquisitor? Because they playing up like this big mystery, like why are they wearing a mask if they didn't want it to be this huge reveal? They're using a traditional Sith Inquisitor lightsaber, so that's why we're calling it another Sith Inquisitor. But a lot of people are wondering if it's just going to wind up being Ezra Bridger underneath the mask and something weird has happened during his time with Thrawn in the Outer Rim. Like, has he been mind controlled? What's happened to him? Because why would they put the Sith Inquisitor under a mask if they didn't want the mask to come off and for it to be this big WTF reveal? Like, I couldn't believe the person we've been looking for this whole time has been right in front of us and we didn't realize it. Because part of the trailers that we've seen before have been this big mystery about what happened to Ezra Bridger. Like, what if he's in front of us this whole time? And during the previous trailers, they cut immediately from a scene of Sabine Wren looking at Ezra Bridger's picture with Ahsoka saying there aren't many of us Jedi left to a shot of her fighting the Inquisitor, who seems like he's way taller than Ahsoka. The lightsaber hilt is also totally different from the one that Shin Hati is using here. So I think the way they edited the trailer, they want you to make the connection to Ezra Bridger and this Sith Inquisitor. Now, it could totally be a completely different character, but remember, this scene, the fight with the Inquisitor, is happening when she's wasting this Thrawn HK droid, so I think that the Inquisitor is connected to Thrawn in some way, but so is Ezra Bridger. It could be a totally unique, like, one-off character, like, just, like, a very brief thing that they brush past really quickly. And if you're thinking about parallels with the original trilogy, like the other Star Wars movies, remember when Luke Skywalker fought Darth Vader on Cloud City in Empire Strikes Back using Anakin Skywalker's former lightsaber? Think about it this way. If Sabine Wren has Ezra's former lightsaber, what if she winds up fighting that Sith Inquisitor with their lightsaber and that person winds up being Ezra Bridger? It'd be a nice parallel for that Empire Strikes Back scene. That's not true. That's impossible. Search your feelings. You know it to be true. Now, because that raises so many questions, it could wind up being a totally different character. Let me know in the comments who you think the Sith Inquisitor is if they're playing it up like this big WTF mystery. Like, what if the mask comes off and everybody freaks out and it's somebody that we know? But because episodes are coming August 23rd, we'll get more trailers while the Secret Invasion episodes, the Marvel stuff, is happening. Of course, I'll be doing videos for that stuff, too, so be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss any of that. They also just released a new Secret Invasion trailer video, so I'll do a video for that as soon as possible. There's a bunch of big stuff happening in the next week, especially the Flash movie, a bunch of other big movies going on right now, too. Click here for my brand new Mandalorian Season 4 video and all about Cal Kestis in live action. And click here for my Star Wars Acolyte trailer video in Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next one.